Welcome everyone to this week's episode of uh, Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Uh, today, our program will be about autism uses social media with our guest, Sarah Zendenham, a journalist and social media specialist. But before we begin, I'd like you to introduce my co-host, Will Mernick. Will, what's with your shirt this week? Funny you should ask that. This week, this this episode, my shirt, my, my shirt is the Giants shirt. Baseball season just started back up, so the Giants are are playing again, and 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 they're even playing in person at Oracle Park again. Now, would you like to begin with Sarah and some of your questions? Tell us about your background. I understand that you've been in news and won an Emmy. Yes, I did. I'm so happy to join everyone. My name is Sarah Zendanam, and I was a TV news reporter, anchor, and weather forecaster for almost eight years. And I did win an Emmy for my reporting um, in June of 2020. So that was very, very exciting. Um, I made the switch to tech um, in November, and now I'm a senior technical writer writing documentation for um, different clients around the Bay Area, including one of the largest social media platforms in the world. Tell us about which social media platforms you use today and their relationship to our professional lives. I use a lot of different social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. I use them all um, and I use them to uh, promote my brand. I use them to promote my work that I'm doing. Um, and I use them to engage with the people who have followed me over the years. Let's start with Facebook, the most popular of the social media. How do you use Facebook? How can we use Facebook in our professional lives? Well, well, you're you're absolutely right there. Facebook is the most used and engaged with social media platform across the board. Um, the audience is slightly older, so it's actually a really good place to run ads because um, older demographics typically have a little bit more money to spend. Um, so that's definitely a good place to um, promote and advertise if um, you want to promote yourself, your business, your work, whatever you're doing. Facebook is really the best place to start. Um, and you can also create a business Facebook page that's separate from your personal one. Um, so you can have that for your business, your brand, your community, if you're a public figure. And um, when you create something like that, then you have access and you can advertise on different Facebook groups and things of that nature. So Facebook is really a great place to start if you want to dive into social media. We'd now like to have a question from Jennifer Brooks, our book commentator. Jennifer? Do you have a question for Sarah? Yes, I have a question for Sarah. So social media has pros and cons. Some of the pros are that, you know, we can stay in touch with people that we don't necessarily live close to. So we don't have opportunities to interact with those people in person on a regular basis. And for some of us, it's easier to uh, to interact with somebody via a computer than in person. Of course, that can also be a con because we don't get the in-person interaction. If somebody is doing nothing but uh, holding up in their bedroom on Facebook all day, that's not healthy. And also social media can promote cyberbullying. So my question is, in light of those pros and cons, do you feel that uh, social media use is beneficial to people on the spectrum and is something that should be encouraged or should it be discouraged in favor of promoting in-person interactions as much as possible? You know, that's a really good question, Jennifer. And I think that a lot of people do see those pros and cons. I think the most important thing, if you're getting on different social media platforms, is setting those boundaries. Um, you know, if, if you have people that um, you want to stay in touch with, that's wonderful. And if there are people that are bringing negativity on your pages, you have the opportunity to delete those people, ban those people, block them. You can get off the apps um, if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, I think that 
um, in terms of using social media platforms to expand your business and your brand and what you can offer. I think it's a really great place to be able to engage with potential customers and clients. Um, so I definitely see a really big pro there. But like I said, it's really all about boundaries. Um, you don't want to spend too much time on social media because then, you know, you get kind of taken away from, from the real world. But pros and cons, very good to bring up, Jennifer. So I appreciate you asking that question. Well, thank you. I actually have a question piggybacking on, on that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when those on the spectrum are, you know, getting exposed, which they deserve, you know, and then uh, when, it, and also, uh, you know, obviously a lot of these things happen and um, is there like possible like mentoring or psychological like support, you know, like not to say, oh, they're sitting with them the whole time, or, but you know, they're, they're, they're contacting them the entire time say, saying, you know, just focus on this. Don't worry about them. You know, D is there any possible support like that too, just for, a, just to, uh, you know, keep them inspired and keep them just going and confident. You know, the great thing about social media is yeah. that there are so many different groups, support mm -hmm. groups that, yes. um, you know, you can search out and, and that's a great way to be able to find people that can support you in situations like that. Um, I don't know any off the top of my head, but okay. social media is a, a wonderful place where you can definitely find any type of support group you're looking for. Um, so that is, that is for sure a benefit of any of the platforms that you use. Um, and in terms of mentorship opportunities, I mean, if you find someone on social media that you feel like is doing a really good job um, at maintaining their pages, engaging with their um, fans or their, their viewers or their clients or whoever it may be, um, you can reach out to them and you can say, hey, you know, I really like what you're posting and I would love to be able to collaborate with you or pick your brain maybe just have a quick 10 minute conversation with them about how they're able to manage their social media pages. Sarah, you mentioned uh, Facebook usage. Uh, besides Facebook, what other social media do you personally recommend that we use? And what do you use? Well, I think that if you're looking at, at the business aspect of social media, LinkedIn is another wonderful platform. Um, it's the biggest social media platform that directly relates to business professionals. So if you're on social media just for your business or just to promote your brand um, or gain clients or um, you know find different job opportunities, LinkedIn is really, really where it's at. Um, the users of LinkedIn are typically over the age of 35. Um, so an older demographic is uh, more likely to use that platform than the younger demographics. Um, and another interesting fact about LinkedIn is that a lot of LinkedIn users actually live outside of the United States. So that really does present opportunities for businesses and brands that are looking to grow with an international audience. So there are a lot of different opportunities with LinkedIn, but that's really the place where it's, it's very, very business oriented. So you're going to kind of keep a little bit more of your personal life off of that um, and, and really just focus on creating your brand and, and developing business opportunities there. Excellent. So for those of our viewers, and I think probably a lot of us uh, here as well, uh, who may not be experts to the extent that you are, let's say uh, you have an, a new uh, event that you want to promote or something, an accomplishment, uh, a notice of, how would you, Sarah, decide what you're going to do and how you would promote it on these various platforms? That's a great question, Keith. Um, first of all, I would definitely recommend cross-promoting on all of your platforms. Um, if you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whichever one you're on, it's important to just make sure that everybody on those platforms, all of your uh, viewers and, and your followers, that they are aware of everything that's going on across all of your platforms. So if someone on your Twitter doesn't follow your Facebook, you can post something and cross promote it so people are attracted to your Facebook. So um, if there's an event that you're trying to promote, post it on Facebook um, and you can have a lengthier post on Facebook because that doesn't, um, Facebook doesn't limit your characters when you're, when you're typing a post out. Um, and then you could do a shorter, more condensed version for Twitter. You can post um, you know, a picture of the flyer of the event and just a quick blurb about what it's about then you could post the same picture on Instagram. So cross promotion among all of the different platforms is, is really a great way to have, you know, one post hit all of them. And, you know, you're, you're reaching a bunch of different audiences that way. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. You mentioned that uh, Facebook is good for social uh, purposes and tends to skew a little bit older, that LinkedIn is good for business purposes and also skews a bit older. What about the other platforms you use? Uh, what, can you tell us about those? Yes, of course. So um, I'm also very active on Instagram. Um, Instagram is the second largest used network behind Facebook and Facebook actually owns Instagram. So they're, they share the same advertising platform. So when I mentioned cross promotion, that's kind of a, a great thing. If you have Facebook and Instagram, then you can kind of link the two accounts um, and you can post one thing on one app and then it automatically goes on the other app if your settings allow it. Um, so that's definitely a great way to utilize those apps. Um, Instagram has a demographic really all across the board. I mean, younger people use it, older people use it. Um, and Instagram is really trying right now to uh, compete with TikTok. TikTok has definitely the younger generation mm -hmm. on the app. The majority of people are definitely younger there. Um, so Instagram is trying to compete with TikTok with um, Instagram Reels. Um, so it really just depends on who you're trying to reach um, when it comes to your social media and, and what exactly you're trying to promote. Thank you, thank you. I believe in uh, previous off-air conversations, there you'd mentioned a tool which allows uh, users such as yourself to like keep track and organize all your social media uh, presences and platforms. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So um, I recently discovered a website called Linktree or Linktree, um, and it's basically a website where you can. Um, it gives you just a, a landing page. And it has, it can, you can have all of your social media links on one page. So instead of on your profile, for example, on Twitter, instead of posting every single one of your social media links, like here's my Facebook, here's my Instagram, here's my TikTok. Instead of doing that, Linktree just gives you one link. Once you click on that, it has all of your social media links right there in a very organized and user-friendly way. That was really helpful, Sarah. Will, I understand you have another question for her. Can you tell us more about building your brand? Absolutely, Well, that's a great question. Um, it really just depends on how you wanna market yourself and what exactly you're trying to get out to your audience and to your followers. Um, the way that I market myself, um, I really love the Bay Area, born and raised here, love California. Um, so a lot of my posts are based around, um, you know, Northern California, the Bay Area, different places that you can shop and eat, kind of lifestyle, things of that nature, but also news because I have such a strong background in news and the majority of my followers came from my news days. I still post a lot of news content um, because that's kind of how I want to market myself. Um, so I think that the best way to start that is figure out who you are and what exactly you're trying to promote and make sure you really stay consistent with that. Because if someone starts following you thinking that this is what your brand is, and then you, you completely, you know, sidetrack and then start focusing on something else, then your followers may get a little bit confused. Um, so first step, figure out exactly who you are, what you're trying to promote. Second step, stay consistent. Are, are, there other, are there other social media platforms? Yes, there are several other social media platforms. The two other ones that I use very consistently are Twitter and TikTok. Um, so the interesting thing about Twitter is that the usage and growth has remained fairly consistent year to year with Twitter. Um, so the audience has, you know, kind of just stayed consistent, which means that TikTok or Twitter rather is kind of here to stay, which is, which is a great place to um, go because it offers shorter term interactions. Um, there's a character limit. You can't go over that limit when you're typing out a post. Um, so that kind of limits exactly what you can say, but it is a really good platform to get really quick news out there. If you want to conduct customer service for your business, Twitter is a really good place to do that. Um, and cross-promoting, like I mentioned earlier, on Twitter is really good. So um, if you want to post, um, like I mentioned earlier, an event on Facebook and you have all of the details on Facebook, you can cross-promote that on Twitter and just post, um, you know, the event flyer and say, you know, where it is, who's going to be there, the time it is, and that's it. And, you know, keep it very short and to the point. Um, so Twitter is a really, is, um, a really good platform. I, I use it very often. Um, and a lot of, um, you know, like I mentioned, very short-term interactions on that platform. 
Jennifer, I understand that you have a follow-up question for Sarah. Um, yes, actually a two-pronged question. So I am the book reviewer for this show. And part one of my question is, do you think social media is taking the place of reading? And do you think that's healthy? Because in a way they are both solitary activities. You're either holed up in your bedroom with a book or you're holed up in your bedroom in front of a computer posting things on Facebook. And my second question is, I have many taped book review segments that I have recorded for this show over the years. What would you suggest would be the best way to put those out there on social media, if that makes sense? Of course. Well, Jennifer, we can start with that question because that is a great question. Um, I think that the number one thing that you should start with if you're, if you're wanting to post a book review, a picture of the book, the, the front page of the book, exactly what the cover looks like. If you have a photo in any of your social media posts, it immediately grabs your audience. Um, so rather than having lengthy text as the first thing that they look at, if they see a picture, you know, a, a nice, beautiful book cover, then they'll automatically be drawn to it and say, hmm, I wonder what this book is about. Um, and from there, you can post, um, you know, your, your review, whether it's a, a link to a video that you've created, or if you just kind of want to write out um, exactly what your review on the book is. Um, either way, that is totally great for um, really any social media platform. I think that Facebook um, and LinkedIn would both be really good places to start with that. Um, I think the, the most important thing um, when it comes to making your post, um, in addition to you know, posting the pictures, is um, make things short and sweet. Um, a lot of people on social media don't have a really long attention span because they have different things coming at them all the time when they're scrolling. And so it's really good to keep your posts short and to the point, you know, let people know right away off the top what they're going to see, what they should expect if they're reading your post, um, you know, right off the top, if you're doing a book review, you say, this is the book that I'm reading. Um, and this is my quick summary review. I thought it was great. I would 10 out of 10 recommend it to my friends or, you know, I didn't think this book was that great. And here's my explanation of why. Um, so, you know, keeping it short and sweet just to make sure that you, you do have more of an audience looking at it and make sure they're actually reading all of the hard work that you put into those posts. Um, that's kind of a good way to go about it. Stacy, I understand that you have another question for Sarah. Well, I'll just I'll just um, simply ask it. What do you think about streaming? I mean, you see a lot of that happening, obviously, too, and especially on a lot of uh, social networking. So, what do you think of streaming? How do you think that is? I think going live on platforms is a great way to show your followers who you are um, and really engage with them. Um, there is research out there um, specifically about TikTok. Um, that says if you go live on TikTok, um, the algorithm kind of pushes your uh, videos to the front of the, the main page, basically, that, that people can kind of have access to, um, because they're really trying to roll out all of their new features with um, the app. So um, we'll, we'll focus on TikTok for this one. If you're going live on TikTok, the algorithm will push you up, more people will see your content, and then more people will want to follow you because um, they'll have access to your videos. And I think that, um, you know, you can go live on Instagram, you can go live on Facebook. It's a really good feature to utilize just to, you know, all you have to do is just set up your phone in front of you and just talk. And if people want to, um, you know, ask you questions, you can you can respond to those questions in real time. So really, really good way to again promote exactly what you're trying to promote and how you're trying to market yourself and engage with your followers. Awesome. I have one more question. Um, you mentioned Linktree or so, where you can put all your social media contact like on one list. And um, it, do you think it's necessary to be uh, part of all those like networks just to stay in the in, in the flow um even though it might be hard to keep up or, or so what do you think is the best way to, to keep up with all those things 
you know, I, I have to admit it does get a little bit overwhelming because yeah. I'm, I'm posting on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok every single day. Uh-huh. Um, but that's, that's because of my background um, in news. It was just part of my job. So uh-huh. it's just something that I'm used to doing throughout my day. Um, but for someone who, you know, isn't used to doing that, it can be very overwhelming. I think that you really, like we talked about earlier, setting boundaries with social media is very important. Social uh-huh. media can be a wonderful place where you can connect with people and you can really grow your business and your brand and who you are. But there are, of course, um, you know, like Jennifer mentioned, a lot of pros and cons. Um, so set boundaries with yourself. You get to decide what platform you want to be on. You don't need to be on every single one of them if you don't feel like you can maintain them all or if you feel like it's going to be too much for you. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, you are the person that makes that decision. And then if you feel like, okay, I have a good handle on Facebook, maybe I can introduce something else into the mix, um, you know, then jump on Instagram, then jump on Twitter. Um, but you really make that decision for yourself and, and what you feel like is best for you and, and what you're trying to accomplish. Now, I understand that you have a couple of final tips for our viewers. Could you go into those, please? Of course. These are some tips that um, I've found throughout my years of being on social media. Um, So if you're brand new to a platform or if you've had it for a long time, take a look at your uh, profile, kind of your about me section and make sure everything is filled out. Make sure um, whatever you're really comfortable with sharing your name. Um, who you are, exactly what you're offering um, on that platform, your contact information, if you feel comfortable with that. I would recommend just an email address, not your phone number or your home address or anything like that, just for privacy issues. Um, If you want to include your resume, um, it's really important that if someone goes to those platforms, that they see exactly what you can offer right off the bat. Um, Another tip that I would have is try to keep your platforms neutral. Um, If you are applying for a job, um, employers do typically look Look at your social media platforms. So if you have things that um, you know could be controversial or lead to problems for your future employer, um, they may see that as an issue and they may be wary about hiring you because they may worry about um, you know if, if your post can kind of cause trouble for the company. Um, another tip is consistency. Um, so similar hashtags, posting around the same time, and keeping your content similar. Like I mentioned earlier, um, if someone's coming to your page and starts to follow you because of one thing that you posted, um, those people are typically gonna be following you because they assume that you're gonna be posting similar content. So keeping your content consistent, very important. Um, And just one more quick tip about um, pictures or videos that you post, good lighting, very important. You can buy um, any type of light off of Amazon. Um, I have a ring light in front of me right now. It's 20 bucks off of Amazon. And it just kind of brightens you up a little bit and makes you look just a little bit more professional um, because people that if you're um, you know, promoting your brand, your business, yourself, you want to present yourself in a professional way. Um, and if you just spend a little bit of money or just take a lamp in your house and just put it on your face and then you can get the same effect. So um, keeping the good lighting and the good audio, things like that will definitely give you more of a a professional demeanor. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. Last thing, are there any things that you are developing that uh, our viewers, potential followers should know that you're working on right now? Me? Yes. Oh, (laughs) Um, I mean, if anybody wants to follow me on any of my social media platforms, I'm more than happy to guide anyone who has questions. Um, You know, it has taken me years to get to a point where, um, you know, I have I have kind of a consistent brand and I'm marketing myself in in a consistent way. Um, And it's taken a really long time to get to that point. So I'm more than happy to help anyone, um, you know, if if they're just starting out or if they've had their platforms for a while and they don't know how to gain traction on it, um, you know, follow me. You can take a look at some of my pages and kind of see what I'm doing and um, just see if maybe that could work for you as well. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Sarah Zendenham. Um, We're very grateful for your uh, presence, for your attendance, for your wise information. And I know we'll be hearing and seeing great things from you going forward. I appreciate it. Thank you all so much for giving me the time and the platform to speak about these platforms. You're very welcome. We'll now hear from our cultural correspondent, Stacey Kennedy. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'd like to share uh, like three things. Saturday, April 17th uh, at 10 a.m., 
there's going to be a online Zoom casting call for a uh, romance on the spectrum documentary being produced. And they're looking for, um, well, the featuring people on the spectrum who are single, who are looking like to date, um, especially in San Francisco and what experience or not, it doesn't matter. Um, anyone who is, um, whoops, so, suddenly I can't read my writing. No, so, anyway, um, so yeah, th this documentary wants to uh, promote, you know, and just re just clarify because of the misconceptions of people on the spectrum not interested in love, which they are. And um, let me see. Uh, yeah, so northernpictures.com, I would go and look them up, or production at northernpictures.com to look up more about that or contact them for that. Uh, next, the reminder of autism awesomeness, Wednesday, April 28th, so um, with Karen Kaplan. So if, if you sign up to do that, uh, you'll be there to share your talent, or you can come and watch the talent. Um, May 1st, Saturday, Best Buddies uh, Friendship Walk, virtual event at 10 a.m., uh, Go to the website, and um, if you want to register, you have until about April 24th. Um, walkers who qualify for a shirt by April 12th, um, pick up your shirts at um, and at the website. Stephanie Taylor is the person to uh, contact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stacy. We'll yes. now hear from our book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's book review. Today, I would like to tell you about a children's picture book titled, My Friend Has Autism. This is narrated by a young boy telling us about his friend, Zach, and Zach has autism. And this boy and his friend, Zach, love to play with model airplanes together. And Zach also has some character traits that some people might call quirky, and some people less politely might call weird or strange. And the reason why Zach does those things is because Zach has autism and his friend is a very caring and understanding friend and knows about Zach's autism and still enjoys playing model airplanes with Zach. The book has little tidbits of information about autism such as this one here. And at the end of the book, there's a little paragraph which gives an overview of autism. So this book is an excellent resource to help the youngest children understand what autism is and understand that even if they know someone affected by it, they can still be friends. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Well, folks, uh, that's our program for this week. Uh, Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Lou Burnick. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Stacey Kennedy. And I'm Sarah Zendanam. And until next time, stay well, stay safe. Take care.